Hello, power users. Hope everyone's doing well this month. Um, this month, I want to talk to you about working with graphics, working with pictures, different resources for doing that. And I know before you immediately hit stop and you think I don't need to edit pictures, my phone no longer puts red eye, I don't need to no. know. There's more to it than that. I want you to think about, you may be asked to create student learning materials for the classroom. You may be able asked to create or need to create a nice handout for some professional development. Um, you may be adding some different graphics to a slideshow. You may be posting to social media on behalf of a program. You may be making your own YouTube videos just like this one and you need to create a thumbnail. There's so many different reasons why you might be working with graphics. At this time of the year, getting close to the end of the year, a lot of times it may be creating certificates for student achievement throughout the year. Uh, so lots of things that, that where this can come into play, and that's why I want to talk about it this month. First of all, I will be giving you a link at the end of this video to two other videos that I've made in the past that are still relevant. One will be how to create and edit your own graphics working right inside Google Slides. No fancy editing process with Photoshop or whatever, but you will make your own learning materials or your own handouts just using the techniques that you can use inside Google Slide. You'll be amazed at how effective Google Slide can be at some of those. So that's what one video will be about. The second video would be about working with photos in Google Slides. How can you take a photo, edit it, crop it, change it up, and then add to it with some of the other tools in Google Slides to turn it into some learning materials. So both of those videos, kind of lengthy, you won't want to sit and watch them all at once, but you may pick up different things that you need from those. In this video, I just want to quickly go through some resources with you because resources are changing and being updated all the time. Companies are making new things available to teachers. Some of the things that I share in this video may be things that you've seen me share before, Hopefully some of them will be new material for you. I won't demonstrate how to use all of these things because some of them are fairly complex. Others are pretty easy. I'll give you some quick demos and then I want to end up in a place where I will show you something new for teachers that is just amazing. So stick with me for this. We will take a look at resources for working with graphics. Let's begin where most graphic works begin, and that is in editing photos. But we're not going to do a lot of fancy editing here. We want to find ways to do quick and easy things that will get us to our ultimate result. And I will tell you, I'm going to show you lots of sites and resources. Don't try to write them all down. There will be a handout with lots of links. So just kind of run through this with me. First of all, three sites that if you don't want to spend money on Photoshop or some fancy editing piece of software, these are sites where you can just upload a photo, edit it for free, download the edited version. And these sites all have fairly complicated and in-depth tools for you to use. So I think this would meet most of your needs. Uh, Lunapic, as you can see, if you start to just look at the, the uh, menus, there's so many options that they will do for you. Um, I have used this some primarily for this feature right here to blur a face, which is one of the drawing tools, um, but a great site to edit photos. Pixlr is the same. You would go to the Pixlr E Advanced Photo Editor on the side here. That would take you in and let you start editing your photo. And last is Photopea or Photopia. I'm never sure how they say it, um, but this is perhaps the most common complex, complete, thorough, most like Photoshop that you will find online. Uh, it has a lot of tools. All three of these are free for all your basic editing and you can download the photos back to your computer. They do have options for joining and having an account and paying for additional features and paying for online storage of your projects and those kinds of things. I think you'll be happy just with the free versions to do any photo editing you have to do. Now, I mostly try to avoid those three because I want to get my stuff done quickly and easily. So I look for something that will do one job, do it well, let me move on. For example, removing a background. I often have a photo and I just need to get the background out of there. Let me show you this photo. The picture of me that I took in my office. Isn't that lovely with the door in the background? 
I want no photo in the background of that because I'm going to use that actually for the thumbnail on YouTube for this video that I'm recording right now. So I need to get rid of that background. I just drag it into remove.bg and remove.bg takes that background right out of there and it will leave me with just the picture of myself with a transparent background that I can then drop into whatever I want. So there it is. All I have to do is download it. Yes, I would have to pay money to download the HD version, but I'm not going to show it that big. I don't need the HD version. Remove.bg takes care of that for me. Now, other things I might want to do uh, with a photo, and I just want to do it quickly and easily again, sometimes I want to take something tiny and make it a little bit larger so that it looks good on a website or on a handout. I'm not talking poster size now. I'm talking just a small improvement. One of those things, or most the most common thing I use it for, is to take one of my Bitmojis and make it bigger. Because you will see very quickly, if I start to make this bigger, Look how pixelated the hairline gets. Look how pixelated it is around the edge of the letters. That's not what I want. So I'm going to take that, drop that right into Upscale Media. It's going to spend a moment working. And when it finishes, we will just download the resulting image. And now let's compare them. If I take the resulting image and let's open that up. Let me get that out of the way. Now let's compare it to the original. If I take the original and make it the same size, you will see there is a difference. Let's make that bigger. On the left, this is the one that we just upscale. On the right would be if I did it on my own, just by expanding and enlarging the photo. You can see a much cleaner version with this one on the left. So we will get rid of that one. And this would be the one that we would use, the one that came from this website. One thing that I might want to do is to do the reverse of that. Take something big and make it small. This often happens if you're doing something like a website where you want to have lots of graphics. They don't need to be giant like these little panda bear pictures. These aren't big pandas. Those are small pictures. And you want your site to load quickly. So if I bring in a gigantic photo of a panda, yes, I can format it so that it will fit in that spot. But it's still loading a large photo in the background. So I don't want that. So tiny PG lets me downscale it. I'm going to take this picture of Jay and Trish doing some painting, and I'm going to downscale it because I don't need it that big. So I'm going to drop it right in there, let it do its work. You will see it reduced it by 72% in size from 1.6 megs to 444 kilobytes. I download it, and now let's compare. Here was my first version. There's Jay and Trish. And let's open the second version of Jay and Trish side by side. Can you tell the difference? If I didn't tell you which one was which, it would be hard to, to tell. I'm sure, if I printed this on a large poster, you would see the difference. You're not going to see the difference when I take it and shrink it up to the size that I need it on a website. It's going to look just fine, and my website will load faster. So that is tiny PG. Last thing I sometimes need to do is clean up a picture, just get something out of there that I don't want, and I don't want to have to go into one of the more complicated photo editing programs. I'm going to drag in a picture of our school here, and so there's our school. Now, I'm going to enlarge it a little bit because I want to zoom in and show you what I want to get rid of. I want to get rid of these lights, these two little silver poles out there, because, yeah, it's really there, but I don't like it in the picture. I like to get rid of that. So I'm going to take the brush. I don't need it to be that large. I want it to be just a bit larger than the item that I'm removing. And I'm going to wipe it right over that. And it will take that right out of there. Gone. I'm going to get this one over here. And I notice this is right in front of a, a piece of the building where there's a shadow in the background. There's a bush there. There's a lot that could go wrong. But it does a pretty good job of just taking that right out of there and leaving the rest looking just fine in the background. Now I can download that and I've got it all set. A nice clean photo. So there are a few complicated editing programs for you and a few very quick and easy programs that do some very specific functions to help you get your photos the way you want.
Working with graphics is certainly not always about pictures. Sometimes it's just about other images or graphics or even text that you want to turn into a graphic. So let's look at four quick sites that will help you with that. Emoji Copy is a great place to find the emojis that you might want to include in something. We all know how to quickly use a keyboard command to insert a smiley face, but do you really know all of these? You may need them. You may want them. You can use the little buttons at the top to quickly scroll through by category, or you can just jump around by scrolling and finding things. You can even use a search to look for certain things. Whatever you find, let's say we're coming up on graduation, you click and there's going to be a graduate. Copy it. And now you can just take that and paste it into your email, your Google Doc, your Word document, whatever you need. One thing that's cool about this is I can select a number of graphics. I can say, I like the graduate and now they're a brainiac. And let's say, oh, where's my, oh, we did okay with that. Now we're number one and goodbye as you go off into the sunset you graduate you. So now we've got five things, copy, I will paste that string. So it's a way to put together a series of emojis and then boom, one paste and they're in your document. Let's say you've got a bullet list. You can emojify that list as well. It doesn't have to be bullets in front of it. It can be whatever. So you can see here, build a robot, pray, and count money. You've got a robot, the praying hands, and a bag of cash. Uh, for us, we are working on, we're editing some photos. You're ultimately going to learn more about tech, and you will be a power user. And if I emojify that, I've got a picture, I've got your graduating from your learning process, and you've got a battery with a lightning bolt. If I like those lists, I can copy it and just paste that right into my document. So you can use emojis to brighten up and enliven your bullet list instead of just those boring old dots. Nobody wants to see a list with dots. What about word art? Take words and turn those words into artwork. Now, they're going to give you three words to start with. These are probably not words you want. So we're going to remove those words. And let's add some words here. The things we're talking about today. Graphics. And we talked about pictures. You get the point. You make your word list. You can also import if you've got a spelling list or whatever. And then you just click visualize. And it's going to visualize that as some word art. And okay, that's fine. That's cool. That's not what I want. The real magic comes further down. I can choose the shape that I want it in. Now I can have my word art visualized in the shape of a heart if I want. You can see I can select by animals, birthdays, Christmases, holidays, emoji characters. Uh, I like the geometric things actually. Those are fun. Um, I like the emojis because I love the smiling face. I like to put them on the smiley face because that's, that's a positive look and it's a cool way to look at all your word art. So there you go. But we're not done yet because you can also change your font. You can choose a font that's going to be a little bit bolder if that's what you want. So you can visualize it with a bolder font. Uh, not done yet. Layout. I like a positive slope on my layout so I can visualize that. And you can see you can just keep tweaking it until you get the look that you want where the words that you are using now are powerful as a graphic design as well and you download it and you're all set the last one is a text generator and that is just where you can take a simple thing and we're going to use power users turn it into a graphic now there's a limit to the number of letters you can type in there, so don't go crazy. It is for a short phrase or a name. But now I have all these different versions of power users and which one looks the way I want. I can just go through any of these pages until I find one that I like. Eventually I'll find something that I really think is appealing and eye-catching. And let's say it's this one right here. I select it. That's the one that I want. I can download it and then I can stick it into an email. I can stick it into a Google document or a Word document or a Google slideshow, wherever I want to use it because now 
my words have become a graphic object that I can use just like any other graphic. I just want to take a look at a couple of resources that are not really about editing photos, but about using photos in different ways or some of the things you'll need to prepare to edit photos. You'll see what I'm talking about. This first one, just a fun site. I want you to know what's there because you can take your one graphic and just instantly turn it into so many other fun things. And this will work whether you are trying to promote something of your own or whether you are trying to find interesting ways to share student photos, you make that decision. This is the thumbnail that is a, the thumbnail for the video you're watching right now. Uh, earlier we saw that picture, we stripped out the background, you can see how it got used. We'll come back to how we made this in a moment, but I'm going to use this again as we work through this. Let me just show you some examples. Great graphics. You can just take your logo or your name or whatever, and there's lots of different ways you can use it. You can just throw it up onto a surfboard. You can throw it up onto an old haunted hotel. Uh, you can have the title on the side of an airplane. Lots of different ways that you can just use the title. But you can also take your, your graphic and have it show up on the front page of a newspaper. It can be on a truck going cross country. Sort of an interesting billboard in the downtown of a modern city. Uh, another billboard uh, downtown. And you can even use your photo and have a celebrity promote whatever it is that you're working on. And all of that happens through one site, and that site is photofunnia.com. You can see there are 637 different effects that you can apply, so don't try to scroll through them all, but go through and pick some. Whether you, know, you want to turn yourself into a poster, or that might be an interesting way to share photos that students, uh, of photos of students, or maybe artwork that a student has created and you've taken photos of. Um, so there are different ways you can demonstrate those or show those off. Uh, you can stick them up on billboards of all kinds. You can put them in frames. You can put them on the cover of magazines. Uh, you can make them a part of a movie scene by just inserting your face into the right spot. And it all happens automatically. Let me show you how easy that is. Let's take this one right here. I want to get my photo on the side of that building. So it says choose a photo. I am going to choose that graphic and it's going to make me crop it and that's fine. I'm going to crop it just so I have the photo that I want right there. Crop that. Boom. Done. Now just click go. And it's going to take my photo, put it on the side of that building. It's just that easy. All I got to do now is download it in the size that I want. So Photo Funny, that is a great resource just for taking graphics that you've created or that your students have created and turning them into something fun. A couple of more resources that I want you to be aware of. One is the Noun Project. You can set up a free account with the Noun Project and it is just icons and photos. So many, so many, so many icons and photos. So if you need just basic icons, you can come here and search and you can see if you have a chair. There are a lot of icons, 397 icon collections, 16,000 different chairs. So you can find a chair if you just need simple representative icons. You choose the one you want and you get this icon. You can download it. Now, you will see that there's options for colors and whatever. For most of these, it's not going to let you do that because you've got a free account. You would have to have the paid account to get that in different colors. But that's okay. You probably don't need it in colors if you're just looking for icons or outlines or whatever. You also have the option of searching for photos. Um, so let's say, well, let's go back to icons. Let's search for bird. And you can see there will be lots and lots and lots of bird options. 13,650 as you go through. But you can see there are also 617 photos of birds. Um, this does have a bird in the background. That's why that one got in there. Um, but all things that are bird and bird related. And again, some of these will not let you download. Some of them will let you download, but only in a small three by three inch size, which might be fine for what you're needing. If you want the larger downloads, you would have to pay or get the paid account. But now project is great for just grabbing those free icons and photos. If you are if you have a, a color that you like, 
like let's go back to this one over here let's say i'm going to do a piece of professional development and try to promote this through let's say a tip of the week i'm going to want this color to maybe be my background or my outline i want that exact color because i want to support the site so i'm going to grab this icon colorzilla and say pick a color from this page and i'm going to come right into the orange and click it now that means that i've got that hashtag color i can come here i can paste it in and that's my color but with this tints and shades website i can also get sort of colors that would work well with it because it's taking that color and adding black to it in 10 percent increments or adding white to it in 10 percent increments so if i need to make it darker or lighter or whatever i can copy that hashtag number as well so if you're trying to get to specific colors or to sort of complementary colors you can combine your eyedropper to select the color and then tints and shades to get different views of colors i would suggest if you are really trying to like you know go hardcore with branding when you get to this page and you think you know the color you want click on go dark you will see colors look much brighter and bolder against a black background so think about how you're going to use that color in your website or on your slide or whatever and then make your choice i want to wrap things up with two new options for those of us in education and this one that you're looking at right now is one of my favorites i use this all the time this is canva.com and canva has always had the option for a free account which was what i was using or a paid premium pro account which i did not use because it was pretty expensive this year they have made a change if you sign up as an educator you can get an education account and the education account gives you access to almost everything in the paid professional premium account so it's just awesome what you can do with it but also by having a canva account if you needed if we decided to teach a course and how to do cool graphic things and work through that course i could set up a classroom right here inside canva you can see i've got emil's class over here and i could assign things to people i could say this week we're going to practice setting up uh, how to do a certificate for people and next month we're going to practice how to do a different kind of project it would all happen right here you would turn in your work we could all see this stuff it would be great and by the way if you want to do that class just let me know i would love it but for right now let's focus on canva canva has so many templates this is just a few of them but it gets you started you can see there are a lot of education things lesson plans worksheets certificates bookmarks class schedules all kinds of things that you can do and when you click on it let's say you click on class schedules you're just going to get a template that you can go in and edit and it will be nice and pretty and you don't have to do all that work of trying to make it look nice so you can then quickly send that off to to parents you can post it in your classroom you can share it with students and it just looks so much more engaging when it looks that nice um, for the the thing that we might be coming up on now for certificates end of the year graduation certificates of appreciation certificates of achievement you can see there are lots of different options here and pick one doesn't matter you've got almost 8,000 to choose from i'm going to pick right here at the top just to make it quick and easy once you choose one you will see it will give you the exact color scheme that it's working in it will let you know the fonts that you're in the size that it's going to print just so that you have that information but i just want to customize it so i click customize and it's going to let me edit it and take that template that already looked great and change it up in the way that i want so maybe i don't want that little ribbon out there so i can get rid of that but if i want a different element there are certainly things i can put in there i could bring in the gold ribbon if i wanted and stick that in there instead and i can change what the text says i can even change what they got it for and i you know you can see you can go through 
get it basically set the way you want. Certificate of Achievement to Timmy. And everybody's signature is there and you're all set. Then once you get it the way you want, just duplicate it. All you got to do is change the name now. And you can do your whole classroom. You can get everyone set. And then when it's all done, you go to Share and you just download it. And then you can print them off or distribute them electronically. It's just that easy to jump in and edit a template. I'm going to do one more just so you see um, the one that I keep promising you we will get back to. You can come in here and just choose, choose YouTube thumbnail. And what you will get are YouTube thumbnails that are pre-sized to exactly fit the size and shape that YouTube wants. It is set with the right resolution and it has that sort of eye-catching display layout that you really want to find in a YouTube thumbnail. And some of these will look familiar because everybody comes here and uses them, not just teachers. So let's say I wanted to like create a, a thumbnail for this video that we're doing right here. Now you can see recently used, here's the one that I used, that I really used. And all I did was change the text and put my picture in there. But let's say now I want to use this one. I just want you to see how quick and easy it is because this guy's not me. So let's get him out of there. But I did upload earlier another picture of me that we used, which is this one. And I want to edit that picture. And the first thing I want to do is just get that background out of there. So this will do it for me. Now, I could have gone to remove.bg and done that first, but if you're working in Canva, it's got that feature for you. Let's figure out how I'm going to place this over here. I want it pretty big. I want it to be a little lower. There we go, just like that. Now, I'm going to take this text, and we are going to do graphic. I'm going to come down here. Resources, that doesn't quite fit. All I got to do is just reduce the size of that text a little bit to make it the size that I want. And there we go. And in our little cross here, we're going to say, let me select that. We're going to say tips and tricks. There we go. Now, their first word was a little smaller. So their little icon that makes it look like a little explosive thing <laughs> was positioned differently. I'm going to pull that out so it sort of matches the curve of the C. There we go. Done. I'm ready to download that and use that as my YouTube template or use that over on Photophonia or use it in a slideshow. It's ready. It's just that easy to create really nice graphics with Canva.com. So I urge you again, get the free educator account, you will definitely use it. Also, one other company that has made a change very recently is Sticker Mule. Sticker Mule is a site that was basically designed for you to go online, design something that you wanted as a sticker or a t-shirt or a magnet, and then you could order them and pay for them and they would send you the stickers or the t-shirts or whatever. You can still do that. That's still their business. But they have made their studio part, the part where you do the creating, free for everyone. So you can come in and just create a sticker on your own. And you can use their templates as a guide, or you can just start designing. And again, it is just so easy. Let's say I want a smaller sticker. I want mine to be two by two. And the background, I don't care about the border. I want to be, oh, let's, well, I do care a little bit. Let's make the background, there we go. Let's just get, and I can change the border size. I can make it thicker or whatever. I'm going to stick with about that size, all right? So now all I need to do is bring in a photo and I'm going to upload. And once again, I'm coming back to my old standard that we're using in this class going to bring that photo in and it will pop right in there. I am going to just stretch it because I need to make it as big as that circle. Okay.
When I think I like it, I can hit preview. That's going to be great. All I have to do is download it. So one more spot where you can quickly create. Now you are limited to the kinds of styles you can create here. You've got stickers, which you saw were basically ovals, rectangles, or circles. You've got packaging, which would be package labels, t-shirts, events, which is, you know, it's going to let you create some certificates and invitations and those kinds of things. Not as elaborate as Canva, but still a good resource and still free. So two places where you can go to really pump up your graphics, find interesting ways to present them, and then get quick and easy access to them so that you can either print them or share them electronically. All right, I hope this has made you excited about working with graphics. I will have a handout with all of these links. Doing this stuff, this is some of my favorite stuff, so I'm eager to hear questions from you. Uh, anyone that wants to do a course in sort of designing online graphics, I'm happy to do that with you as well. There's just so much fun stuff here. And until the next time that I see you, I hope that you continue to develop your skills as a power user. Over the next couple of months, we will be shifting away from education stuff just a little bit because we will be getting into the summer and it will be time for summer travels and vacation. And we will spend the next two months looking at things specifically targeted for your trips this summer. Until then, power users.